Hello, this is Epic Fashion of Nat Smoke Smoke Channel at YouTube. I botched that. Don't give a shit. Anyways, after two albums with Cliff Evans and Mick Tucker going under the tank name behind Algie Ward's back, after all that, lying and all such, saying that they were, you know, saying that they are the original band or some sort of shit, acting like they were there from the beginning. It obviously pissed off Algie Ward to the point where he literally had to do something about it. Instead of taking the band to court, the only way he was going to fight against Cliff Evans and Mick Tucker was by making an album. That's right. He recorded an album and released it in 2013. But instead of just calling it uh, Algie Ward, he decided that he was going to go under the name Tank himself. Yes! And this was by the time that we were having the whole, you know, 2013, we were having the big uh, fiasco between Jeff Tate versus the guys of Queensryche. Instead, while well, that led, uh, be led into, like, you know, lawsuits and such, Algie Ward decided to screw that idea and just go under the name Tank. And what was released is the album I hold in my hand. It's called Breath of the Pit. And of course, just to let them know that he owns the name the Tank right there. The copyright symbol is right at the end of the K to tell them that Tank is his and not Cliff Evans and Mick Tucker. He wasn't going to allow them butcher the, the band that he once created. And with this album, he sure lets them know that he is not letting them butcher it. This is close. This is a Tank album right here. Both War Machine and War Nation we're never, it's like, for those albums, we knew when we, uh, that it wasn't going to be the tank sound. And War Machine was released years after Still Out War, which even War Machine wasn't as close to the sound that was present on Still Out War, nor even War Nation, Breath of the Pit. It's like a continuation of Still Out War. But yet it goes back to that punk fury of Filth Hounds of Hades. It goes back to that sound, even uh, to some extent, even Power of the Hunter. This is Tank. Algie Ward is Tank, just like Lemmy was Motorhead. Algie Ward is Tank. And he lets you know within these tracks, even uh, the first song that opens up, which is the title track, Breath of the Pit, which just starts off with, uh, you know, ambiance or sound, very much continuing the tradition of Tank, which is pretty much for opening tracks, always has to start off with some sort of intro. Here... It does, and it's and Breath of the Pit just lets you know that you're in for a ride. This is a very punk-fueled, aggressive, heavy metal album. But there is some, de um, while it isn't, you know, as catchy or as classic sounding as Field House of Hades, and I will point out some reasons why it isn't as classic sounding. Given and yet, yes, it was released in 2013. But there's other reasons for why the sound isn't as classic. But it's a nice uh, return, a nice return from, you know, Algie Ward. He definitely struck back. And there's also 
some of that in here that you, you, you can tell that he's striking back at the band and it's also within even some of the uh, songs and we'll get to some of those songs definitely. But there's also some other interesting stuff. He definitely isn't without his, uh, without his, uh, you know, creative mind. He's definitely got a mind of his own that, that uh, Cliff Evans and Mick Tucker could never recapture. They can't. Algy Ward is definitely one of a kind in, in some ways. And, and when it comes to his music, he knows what to do with it. Because it was his band, and only he knows what to do with Tank. But there's definitely some ruckus songs on here, such as the title track, such as T-34, just even Kill or Be Killed. Or even uh, Retribution. There's others, you know, there's just some songs on here that are good. But let's go on some of the more interesting tracks on here, like some of the, the ones that I kind of think kind of make the sound the what for what it is. Let's go to like a song such as Victim, which is actually a... It's got to do with cy it either it has to do with cyberbullying or it has to do with uh, cyber sex uh, sexual predators or uh, who knows what, uh, what it, it's definitely uh, since since the whole uh, cyberbullying thing has definitely kind of become you know such a controversy as you know a, a bit, bit of a problem for definitely a lot of young women and such and that's what this is about it's about a woman who ends up entering a chat room and pretty much regrets it. But yet it, it, it's kind of... It, it, it can be deciphered in many different ways, but it ends up almost being meaning the same thing, but who knows what it's really mostly about, but it's definitely got to do with that type of uh, thing. But even though it's definitely a good song as well, it's definitely got a bit of a 70s feel to it as well. Very, you know, that just that punk sound, something that would have fit directly on Phil Pounds of Hades. Just that riff alone is just why I like this track. But the lyrics are definitely interesting. But let's also go to another song on here, uh, which is actually an instrumental. It's called uh, Circle of Willis. It's a definitely a more interesting song. It's not really a punk fused song. It's almost got a blues uh, sound to it, a little bluesy. But it's definitely not a bad song as well. I definitely like it. It's one of the last songs on the album, but also ends with um, just after silence. You end up getting uh, the sounds of a phone call ringing before getting uh, interrupted by obviously Algie World thumping to through the fucking room and. You know, sh uh, slamming his door to where he just picks up the phone, just yelling, uh, what? Just a fitting way to end the album. But let's also go into other tracks, other if we're at, which I did say I was going to talk about three songs on here, at least mostly, because of these are like the focal point of this uh, review. And it's Crawl Back Into Your Hole, which obviously is about. Cliff Evans and Mick Tucker. It's a response to them, pretty much telling them that it's actually it's more of an uh, just his um, kind of it, it letting his feelings out to why you know his feelings towards you know the whole situation. Him that you know you can tell that he's pissed that they took his band. And I can definitely go, and there's some things with the song that I definitely agree with that I also kind of also point out in my review for War Machine, even uh, for even to some extent, even my Flame Wars video, it's where I was like, you know, ranting about Cliff Evans and Mick Tucker. But there's a certain lie in this uh, song that makes, uh, that definitely comes clear for why I think the way that I do, even why I agree with him is, why can't they change the name of his band? Which is another one, uh, it, it, it just makes sense. Because War Machine and War Nation do not sound like a tank album. It's, a, it's, a, it's like, more, uh, like a, a crossbreed of Saxon and Dio. And with some of that Deep Purple, you know, sound, it's, or even Black Sabbath, there's like uh, Dio area, you know, just that sound. Not the very punk-fueled 
or that, that very motorhead influenced sound. But there's also other lines within this song that just also, uh, that you can tell that, you know, you can have, you can feel uh, of Algie Ward. There's like a uh, line such as, uh, let me go back. You know what? I'm just going to read the lyrics. There's a certain one in here and it's leaving my mind. Yes, my reviews are definitely not professional. And this, and yeah, I just found it. And it's got, and it's kind of a, um, I did point this out as well. And my, again, in my uh, War Machine review. And it states in the lyric, without my name, they're unknown. Definitely has got to be it's as true as possible because obviously it just still also adds to my saying of they're just cashing in on the tank name it's a cash in as well but they're also are going under that so, so they can be still recognized they they really are not doing it to they're not doing it for for the fans they're not doing it for the music they're just doing it for themselves and if they did go under a different name, nobody would give a shit. Nobody would know, hey, uh, uh, this band would have, you know, former Tank members. It, they, they would know. So, in ways, the lyrics are also a bit of an opinion. A bit of a statement. And not really just a song. But definitely in a, one of the focal points of the album itself. It's like it's like the centerpiece of Breath of the Pit. But let me tell let me go uh, like I said uh, in the uh, beginning of this video around this uh, early part of the video I said that that the sound isn't as classic sounding as it should be because of some reason it's got to do with the production. It's a and not because it's a raw album but there's some, but there's a gripe I have with some of the sound. It's got to also do with the drums, which is very, it's a an electric drum sound. But even the, it's just seems to be stuck in the same beat most of the time. Just uh, typical uh, double bass uh, style stuff that you expect from uh, most sounds that uh, use drum machines. Definitely kind of making a, a little more uh, mechanical sounding, very di digital sounding, which is something I'm not a big fan of. While I like the writing of the album, it's definitely classic tank, but it's a little too... Even the mixing also I have a bit of a, a problem with as well. Just my gripe with it. But there's also other reasons for why, I'm not, uh, why I say that this album isn't as up to the standards of Phil Towns of Fate, like just the writing wise, it's not nearly as, let's say as memorable, as even though there are some memorable songs on here, but it doesn't, but as a whole, is it um, up to the classic status that Phil Towns of Hades is, you know, it's a, let me talk for a song such as um, Conflict Prime Evil. Probably uh, one of the weakest songs on here. It's not a song that I really like, for some reason. It's not a bad song. It's just one that just kind of feels kind of average. D uh, kind of a weak song in here. Definitely one of the weakest. But there's other songs in here that are good. You got Stalingrad, Time Is Blood. Um, just you know, and of course R uh, Retribution. Still, there's some great songs on here. It's definitely a return of Algie Ward. So after this, what else will be next for Algie Ward? Or Cliff Evans and Mick Tucker? Fuck! Mm -hmm.